أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلقه خاتم أنبيائه سيد رسله سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من أول يوم ظلمهم إلى قيام يوم الدين قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين قال لهم الناس إن الناس قد جمعوا لكم فاخشوهم فزادهم إيمانا وقالوا حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم Respected viewers, brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Throughout the discussion that we had with regards to the Battle of Uhud, we looked at the repercussions and the challenges that faced the Muslims immediately after this particular event, which they had not anticipated. And some of them had thought that indeed the battle is a foregone conclusion and that they have reached the victory that they were supposed to reach. The Quran actually tells us of an event that happened straight after, within a few days after the Battle of Uhud, which is interesting to look at and to shed some light on because a number of verses in the Holy Quran uh, are actually mentioning this particular, actually four verses in the Holy Quran is referring to this idea. The idea is that when, of course, the Muslims were somehow end the defeated or they were not able to attain the victory they withdrew and according to the historical narrations when they withdrew they wanted to see what was the outcome and what was the uh, result and how uh, the army of Quraysh would uh, react uh, we are told in Surah Ali Umran in these particular set of verses about this event that happened afterwards. The event is essentially with regards to the victorious army, or so to speak, or the army that were uh, had the upper hand, that's the army of Quraysh. They stayed in an area known as Ar-Ruha, and they uh, were planning to attack the Muslims and finish them once and for all. They had this encouragement. They said the Muslims are somehow demoralized. So why should we not charge? Why should we not complete what we set out to do and obliterate the Muslims altogether? Uh, the Prophet of Islam, of course, was told about this, uh, was informed by the Wahi, by the revelation, and he gathered the Muslims. He gathered them, including those who were injured. It's amazing that those who were injured in Uhud were rallied and also they were prepared to fight and defend the holy city of Medina. Some of them said, For Allah, la tafutuna ghazwa ma Rasulillah. By Allah, nothing with the Prophet of Islam we will miss. We will not allow this opportunity to go by without um, fighting with the holy Prophet. This was known as the Hamra al Asad, the area of Hamra al Asad, or the so called skirmishes of Hamra al Asad. And the Quran, in fact, tells us of this story. It's, it's interesting to have a look at what the Quran tells us from Ayah 172 to um, Ayah 175. These four verses tell us of the circumstances and the situation at that time. The Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ اسْتَجَابُوا لِلَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَصَابَهُمُ الْقَرْحِ There are those who are righteous and pious who pledge the obedience to Allah and His Messenger after injury had befallen them. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا مِنْهُمْ وَاتَّقَوْا أَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ Those amongst them, not all of them, 
who were righteous and God serving and God conscious, they will be given a lot of rewards. So here is the reference to the injured ones because the injured, they responded to the call of the Holy Prophet to defend and to stand in solidarity and not to allow the charging army of, um, of Quraysh. However, there's a problem. الذين قال لهم الناس إن الناس قد جمعوا لكم فخشوهم فزادهم إيمانا وقالوا حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل. What happened was, can you imagine at that time it was turbulent that people, of course they were down, but there were munafiqeen, there were those who were trying to spread rumors and put fear in the hearts of people. They wanted to weaken them even even further to say to them, that's it, you are finished. There is no opportunity for you. There is no way that you can progress. There are people who people, others told them. What did they say? These people, the Quraysh, they absolutely determined to kill you all. You must fear them. You must not go and fight. You must retract. You must seek excuses. But... The response by these people was, فَزَادَهُمْ imana." Allahu Akbar. How beautiful this is. That when there are individuals who are spreading these rumors, the strength became much more. وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمِ الْوَكِيلِ They said, God is all sufficient for us. He is our guardian. He is our protector. He is the one who will look after us. It's interesting that the Quran it gives us this interest, this very fascinating scenario whereby in, in normal circumstances you expect that the people would be somehow reluctant to go and fight, especially after what had, they had seen in Uhud. The number of people relatively at that time who were killed in the 70s, quite a lot when it comes to an army and so on. So you would not expect them necessarily to feel that strong encouragement or determination to fight. Yet the Quran says amongst them the spreading of the rumors gave them much, much more uh, emphasis to stand up and to fight. And the result was of course, they returned with the favors of the all and the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were not affected by any evil and Allah was pleased with them and Allah's favors are great. Because what had happened was Abu Sufyan, when he saw the determination of the Muslims, when he heard about their resolve and their willingness to fight, he became scared and he told them, the army he said to them, look, we are not going to fight. Some of them, such as uh, uh, people like Naim ibn Mas'ud said to Abu Sufyan, but we're here to finish them off. But Abu Sufyan was very um, he hesitant and indeed reluctant to uh, do anything. But the idea that the Quran, of course, tells us, and remember, if the Muslims had not shown this resolve and this courage, if they had not stood up with faith and certainty, then definitely the Quraysh and Abu Sufyan would have charged against them. The Quran warns and says in verse number 175, Definitely it is Satan who frightens his followers, his friends, those who support him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't fear Satan, fear me if you're truly believers. And this part, this incident after the battle of Uhud highlights what? It highlights the uh, significance of standing steadfast and being patient and being courageous and strong at the time of difficulty or hardship. When we know that we have to do something and we know we have to uh, be courageous in our stance, not allowing the shaitan to put some kind of fear or apprehension in our hearts. When we have a, an Islamic project, when we have something to serve the Ahlul Bayt, when we are trying to uh, instill happiness in the hearts of believers, 
this all shaitan would come to us and would make it difficult, would make many, many different hardships presented before us and we'll put it off. Uh, when you fear the collapse or unsuccess when it comes to any project, you know that that's the shaitan, a project which is to highlight or to get people closer to religion or to bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt. You know the result is what? The result is because of satanic whispering, satanic temptations. Quran says what? الَّذِينَ يُبَلِّغُونَ رِسَالَاتِ اللَّهِ وَيَخْشَوْنَهُ وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَ أَحَدًا إِلَّا اللَّهِ There are those who um, fulfill the message of God and, and they propagate it, they disseminate it. What they fear is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not the shaitan, not satanic temptations, not whisperings, not this fear of failure. No, it is Allah wa ta'ala and therefore the only fear that they have is from the disobedience of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala of doing something that the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala is unhappy with. The challenge therefore is not to become from awliya shaitan but to become from awliya Allah. Awliya shaitan the followers of the shaitan are those who listen to the shaitan and are fearful when it comes to projects and ideas and initiatives and steps that put happiness in the uh, in the hearts of the ma'sumin uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is definitely uh, pleased and would be satisfied with this particular um, uh, decision. Let us remember that the lesson to take from this event in history after the Battle of Uhud is to be wary of satanic temptation, to understand the danger of associating ourselves with shaitan, to continuously practice isti'adha, a'udhu billahi min shaitan ar-rajim, and to look very closely and to contemplate and to reflect upon whom we should be aligning ourselves with, whom we should be supporting on which way we should which which path we should be taking and the story here tells us that there are those who are injured there are those who can have excuses to go run away from the battlefield but when the prophet peace be upon him and his family told them and uh, came forward with this army to fight what happened they responded and they are the ones who attained god's pleasure and God's satisfaction because despite their weakness or some kind of inability in many ways or another, they were steadfast and they were ready to sacrifice their lives for the protection of the religion of Islam. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us satisfaction, his satisfaction, patience, uh, steadfastness but importantly protection against satanic temptations and satanic whisperings and the fear that the shaitan puts in our hearts um, shaitan lakum aduwa. shaitan is an enemy for us therefore we have to consider him as an enemy and indeed fight off and understand his methodology and stay away from his whisperings and his inclinations. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala khayri khalqihi ajma'een. Muhammadin wa ala ahli baytihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin.